Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. And today's guest is the host of the Life Fueled by Faith, a health and weight loss podcast for Christian women. And it's absolutely amazing. She's a certified health and weight loss coach and is making a huge impact on many women through her courses and her coaching. And it's an honor to have you on the show. Please welcome Jesse Conley. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you became so passionate about helping other women and how you've, you know, after you had kids, how can you, how do you feel like you can really relate to people who are having struggles with their weight? Yeah, I think um, for me, it really comes from a place of like, I'm a busy mom and I know most moms are busy moms, right? And so I think what, a, what the main struggle is that I see is um, women struggling with their weight, struggling with energy, struggling with self-confidence, and it really bleeds into all areas of their life. And um, for me, you know, weight loss was something that I knew I needed to do for the health of myself and for the health of my family and to just really transition into that. And because of my own struggles and because I'm such a busy mom, you know, I've got three kids that are all eight and under. I have a full-time corporate job. You know, I do, I do the Girl Scouts. I do the PTA. I, I, you know, we're involved in our church. And I, I just wanted to show, I really want to show other women that you can do it. Um, that you don't have to be this, you know, perfect wonder woman where you get everything right all the time, but that you can, with God's help, accomplish the things that you need to accomplish for your family. And so through my own struggles and and learning how to find that harmony between everything that has to happen as a busy mom, um, while still making my own health a priority, because if I'm not performing 100%, how can I take care of my kids the way that they deserve to be taken care of, right? And yes. so that, that, that really became important to me. And um, I've learned a lot on my journey. And so I just really had this passion for just wanting to help empower women to unlock this side of themselves and just really see what they're capable of and what God has designed their bodies to do and what we're able to handle and, and just take it all with grace. Now, what kind of foods do you, well, first of all, I know that you are a big advocate for intermittent fasting. So what's your daily eating schedule like? Yes, I love intermittent fasting. Um, I was introduced to it almost a year ago, exactly, actually. It was last November um, that I was first introduced to intermittent fasting. And I got to be honest, I was one of those people where I did not think I was going to be able to do it. Um, I love eating. I had always, you know, been in that mindset of you have to eat every two hours and you have to do this. And I'm also hypoglycemic. And so the idea of going so long without food, um, I honestly went into it as this isn't going to work for me. <laughs> like I was that person that went into it just being like, there's no way this is going to work. Um, but I trusted the process and I started to do it and I, you know, went through, went through the beginning phases of figuring it all out. But ultimately what I found really works well for me is the eight hour eating window. So there's a couple of different intermittent fasting methods out there, of course. Um, but the two most common are the six hour eating window and the eight hour eating window. And for me, the eight hours worked best. So I typically eat my first meal of the day um, at 11 a.m., which is when I'm at work. It's technically my lunchtime at work. Um, but I still eat breakfast food for that first meal because I love breakfast food. <laughs> so. so what kind of things do you have? So like for your first meal, what kind of things do you have? Usually I'm eating eggs in some form, whether it's scrambled eggs or some kind of an omelet or a frittata, um, but eggs in some form and then um, some kind of healthy carbs. So it'll be like a sweet potato or um, oats are my, my most common breakfast. And I'm a creature of habit. So I stick to pretty close to the same things on the day to day. Gotcha. And what kind of foods do you eat? Like, is there anything you say like, this is off limits for me um, and I don't have it at all? Is there anything you deprive yourself of? 
No, I, I, for me, what I've really learned is that it truly depends on what your current goals are. Um, but I will say that with the caveat that I do always believe that we need to be getting away from highly processed foods and a lot of added sugar in favor of more natural wholer foods. But other than that, it really depends on what your ultimate goals are. What I mean by that is when I was strictly in my weight loss phase, like my goal was, you know, simply to lose weight, get on that scale every Friday and see that the scale had gone down. When that was my goal, um, I was able to have more flexibility. I do believe in flexibility um, because I believe it allows us to stick to it more long term versus when we super try to deprive ourselves from all of the things, right? right. Well, that's funny that you say that because right now, <clears throat> My goal is not weight loss. Um, yeah. My goal, my goal is like health, just making sure that I'm feeling good. Um, just because I've gone through kind of a long journey of just not feeling great, and I love that you yeah. said that because that's exactly right. Like right now, my goal is not weight loss. My goal is just feeling, waking up every day feeling like a million bucks. And I know what I feel great on and what I don't feel great on, and so I have to make the decision that. I'm not depriving myself. I'm eating what I want within these boundaries that I know that I'm still going to feel good because I know that um, for me, if I have, you know, a ton of gluten and bread, I'm going to feel awful and I'm not going to be able to do, I'm just not going to be able, I'm, I'm going to be in bed is what's going to really happen. But it's only because, but, but I've, I'm actually about five pounds heavier and, um, and I've right now, and I'm eating cleaner than I ever, ever have. I've, I've cut out dairy. I've cut out gluten. I'm not eating eggs. And o the only reason I'm not eating those three things is because I've learned that I feel terrible when I eat them. Like I love eggs, um, but unfortunately my body just doesn't, you know? And so I have to know those three things. But, but if I'm craving yogurt, then I'll just get a dairy-free yogurt. Or right. if I'm craving an ice cream, I'll get a dairy-free ice cream, you know, with low, you know, chemicals and low sugar. So I'm, I'm still eating what I want and what my body's craving. But I know that those three items, unfortunately, are a trigger for me. And so my number one goal right now is health. But because I'm eating, I'm eating a ton of avocado, I'm eating... A, lots of nuts. I'm eating some other things that are just higher in calories. And so that's why I think I'm just a few pounds heavier than I was. But I'm healthier and I feel better. So that's my goal. And so I love that you said that. Yeah, for sure. You know, and, and I'm at a phase right now where, you know, I've lost the weight and I've successfully maintained it for a while now. And so I'm at a point where I'm pushing my goals to a new level where I'm actually looking for body composition changes, right? Like I'm mm -hmm. trying to build strength, get muscle definition, get- And intermittent fasting is so, so good for, for body composition. It really is. It, it helps you stay leaned out. And then by, you know, on the flip side of that, it also means I'm eating way more carbs than I was before <laughs> because mm -hmm. you have to have a surplus of carbs to really good uh, build good muscles. So for me, you know, I'm at a point where, whereas before when I was doing weight loss, I stuck more to a um, keto style diet for the last 25 pounds that I lost. And so I was eating very low carb, very high fat and had a lot of amazing health benefits from that in addition to the weight loss. But now because my goal has shifted, um, my approach has shifted. And I, I think that that's something that people often miss is they think that they have to pick one labeled diet of some kind and that that's what they have to do for the rest of their lives. But that's not true. I think that your approach has to change depending on your specific goal. And then it also is going to change once you get to maintenance. Like once you've lost the weight or you've reached health or you've reached those body composition goals, even that means that you have to change what you're doing because in maintenance, you can be a little bit more flexible with things. You can, you know, have the treats a little bit more often. You can do these different things. Um, so it really has to, has to be um, fluid. Like your, your approach has to change depending on, on what you're doing.
That's awesome. And you have really have been outspoken about your faith, which I am too, which I really respect. And how has your relationship with God impacted your, just your view of yourself, your body, your diet, your exercise? Yeah, I actually love talking about this, uh, mostly because it's kind of a more recent development for me in terms of putting God in the center of my health and fitness. So previously, it's not like I intentionally kept God out of that part of my life, but I was never intentional about putting him into it, right? Like there was, oh, I've got to exercise and I've got to diet and I got to do all these things um, for me, 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 me. And more recently, I got to thinking about it. And I, I like to use this analogy. When you go to somebody else's house, or let's say you're house sitting for somebody, right? And you're staying in that house, but it doesn't really belong to you, right? Like you're, you're a steward of that house while those people are gone. And typically when we're in somebody else's house, we're super, super careful, right? Like we try not to make big messes. We don't get crumbs everywhere. We try not to break anything. Like we're extra careful in somebody else's house versus when we're in our own house, right? And I got to thinking about it. And, you know, the Bible says that this body is not ours. It was bought with a price and we belong to God. And I got to thinking about that. And I'm like, okay, if this body is not mine, why am I treating it in such a horrible way? I am not treating this body as though it belongs to Christ, which it does belong to Christ. And so it really was a mental shift for me. And it was a very big aha moment where I kind of was like, you know, I have got to treat this body the way it deserves to be treated as something that belongs to God. Um, and then also understand that I need to be healthy and I have a duty to be healthy so that I can fulfill whatever mission God has for me on mm. this earth, because we're all here for a reason and a purpose, but how can I fulfill that purpose if I'm not taking care of myself in the way that he desires for me? Now, notice I said, I have to be healthy for him. I'm not saying you have to be skinny for him. I'm not saying you have to you know, diet for him. That's not what it's about. But what it's about is truly being healthy and being able to answer his call um, in whatever it is that he has you do. And another big part of that for me was, was my confidence. And I, I really like to point this out, especially as women, I think we all suffer from low confidence so much. And I truly believe that that comes from the enemy because if we are super self-conscious and we try to be really closed off and we're afraid to put ourselves out there, are we then going to reach out to people for Christ? Are we likely to share our testimony and bring other people to Jesus? No, we're too self-conscious. We're too worried about how our clothes aren't fitting right or how somebody's going to make fun of me if I say the wrong thing or, you know, my haircut's not right. So I don't want to be in front of people. It keeps us from doing the mission work. And so I really believe that this massive lack of confidence, I really believe that's coming from the enemy. It's certainly not coming from God because God only gives us what is right and what is good. Um, and those things are not good thoughts. So they're not coming from God. So for yeah. me, it was very much an intentional mindset shift of being like, Hey, I'm here for a reason. Um, I need to fulfill whatever work it is God has for me here. And he's going to give me the strength to do that. And I need to ignore the fear um, that's coming from the enemy and do what God's calling me to do regardless. And then remembering that this body is not mine, it's God's. And I need to treat it with the respect that I would when I'm borrowing anything from anybody else. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. And I think that, you know, for me, I had to come to the realization that like, because in my book, I talk about the fact that I believe that you should be eating 80% is kind of cl clean foods. And then 20%, you know, if you want a little of this or if you want a little of that, don't deprive yourself. And and I truly believe that. But I also believe that you go there. Sometimes you go through seasons where like right now for me, I have to say to myself, I know that when I have gluten, I even a little bit, I feel awful. When I have dairy, I feel terrible. When I have too much sugar, I feel terrible. So I have to balance that and go, I'm not depriving myself. I just know that if I wanted, if I want to do the purpose that I believe God's called me to, this is a season where I'm going to cut this out of my life for this season. And then maybe I can reintroduce it one day once my body, kind of my gut gets healed and I've fixed this and fixed that. 
Um, and I know a lot of people who've had to cut gluten out. They've had to cut, cut dairy out. And then they, they have a season where they can, they've healed their gut and they can add it back in. So that's kind of the rationale. But let's jump right into our listener questions. This is from Mary in Dayton which I don't know where that is. <laughs> I don't know where half the places are that people say, but she says, I have a four-year-old daughter and recently gave birth to a son about six months ago. When I had my daughter, I was in my 20s and the weight literally fell off, but I'm 31 now and it's completely different. I've tried everything and I'm finally going to try intermittent fasting, but I have seen different reviews for moms that are breastfeeding. What is your opinion on intermittent fasting and breastfeeding. I love this. Um, first of all, shout out to the breastfeeding mamas. <laughs> I, you know, I breastfed and I, I know how awesome that is. And I also know how difficult it is. So shout out for that. That's awesome. Um, and that being said, you know, when I had my third baby, I, I of course breastfed him and, and I actually lasted the longest with him. Um, I was able to nurse him until he was 15 months old, which was awesome. Um, I think the one thing to remember with intermittent fasting, a key element that people often overlook is intermittent fasting is not meant to be a form of consistently eating less calories. It's simply telling you when to eat those calories. So what I mean by that is if you need to eat 1800 calories while you're breastfeeding, I'm just pulling that number out. I obviously don't know how much that particular person needs in calories, but let's say you need to eat 1800 calories while you're breastfeeding. When you're doing intermittent fasting, you will still eat 1800 calories. You're just going to eat it in a smaller window of time in that 24 hour day. So breastfeeding and doing intermittent fasting should not be a problem if you're otherwise healthy and you don't suffer from any kind of supply issues. Um, but intermittent fasting alone should not um, create any supply issues because again, you're still eating the same amount of calories just in a shorter time frame. Yeah. And my opinion on this is that I remember when I had um, my son and I was breastfeeding, I was ravenously hungry. Like I was just really, really hungry all the time. Like I was just like, I didn't never felt like I could get enough food. And the crazy part was the minute I stopped breastfeeding, a lot of people are the opposite. A lot of people, you know, the breastfeeding because you're, it is burning so much calories that they lost so much weight. For me, I was the opposite. The second I stopped breastfeeding, I lost a ton of weight. And I think what it was, was that I felt more ravenous than I actually was. So I just felt ravenous. So then I was like eating more. Um, so I think, um, Intermittent fasting is fantastic even while you're you're breastfeeding. And I would just really listen to your hunger cues. Like, are you hungry? Um, you know, are you full? And just making sure that um, maybe you want to elongate that window um, a little bit longer. Like if you maybe are normally doing a six-hour window, um, do an eight hour window if you're breastfeeding or, or whatever. So, but yeah, I was the actual opposite when I was breastfeeding. As soon as I stopped breastfeeding, I lost a lot of weight. So it's, it was actually bizarre. All right. Jamie in Pittsburgh says, you've mentioned before that one of the benefits of intermittent fasting is less meal prep which I absolutely love. I typically eat one meal a day, which is dinner, but by the time I get off work and pick up my kids from daycare, it's almost six and I don't feel like cooking. It's important to me that my family sits down and eats dinner together like I did when I was growing up. Do you have any good meal prep tips that I can share that I can spend less time in the kitchen in the evening, but don't settle for unhealthy, convenient foods? Jamie in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm a big fan of prepping on the weekend to help get me through the week. So, you know, kind of like I mentioned in the beginning, I have a full-time corporate job. We have to drop kids off at school and daycare and all that kind of stuff. So I get the craziness of the day. And for us, we get home around 5 p.m. and bedtime for our kids starts around 7 p.m. So it's not like I have a ton of time. And, you know, you got to fit in homework and all that other stuff in there. So I get it. And one of my favorite things to do is, cook as much as I can on the weekend for whatever we're going to be eating that week. Um, some of my favorites to, to have on hand 
um, are things like making ground turkey or ground beef and, and making taco meat. Because then throughout the week, you can throw that taco meat in tacos on taco salads. You can mix it in with some sweet potatoes and some vegetables and make a little bowl out of it. Like you can, it's a versatile protein to have on hand. Um, so that is one of my favorites. And then I'll be honest too, I always have frozen veggies in my freezer for those super extra busy nights because frozen veggies are almost as good as fresh. They're, pe they're picked at the peak of freshness and then flash frozen. So they're almost as good as fresh. There, it's so nice to be able to occasionally come home, we're super busy, um, and I just take out a bag of the frozen veggies and steam them in the microwave for four minutes and they're done. <laughs> um, so there's, I mean, and that's faster than going through a drive through in most cases, right? So um, it is definitely possible to kind of think ahead a little bit. Um, I'll make brown rice on the weekend and have it in the fridge. I'll make shredded chicken in a crock pot and have it in the refrigerator. I was going to say the crock pot to me is the king um, because you can, I've got a couple of really great crock pot recipes that I'm going to put on the site um, that are just so easy. Like you can just literally throw everything in the crock pot and it takes maybe four minutes and boom, when you come home, it's like amazing. Yeah. I'm a fan of the crock pot. I know for me, like, like we're, we're actually away from the house too many hours of the day for even a crock pot to work for us mm -hmm. right. um, because we leave at 6 a.m. and we're not home till 5 p.m. So that's 11 hours away from the house, right? Mm -hmm. um, so even a crock pot doesn't work for us. I, I am, however, an instant pot junkie. Oh, yes. I love the yes. Um, and it's, I mean, it's amazing for this, you know, same reason, except for I can cook something in like 15 minutes in the, in the pressure cooker. Um, so yeah. So, yeah What's your favorite recipe that you have in for your Instapot? Oh, geez. Um, I'm a really big fan of stew. I, it's, it's definitely a comfort food for me, but I've learned how to healthify it also. Um, and I love it. And I, you know, you can make a stew in the Instant Pot in like 15 minutes and the meat is so tender. You would think it's been in a crock pot all day long. Mm. Um, so I'm a really big fan of that. Another really good one is, um, I will make salsa chicken. So you literally throw chicken breast in there with like half a jar of salsa. Uh, you cook it for seven minutes or whatever it is, depending on how much chicken you put in there. And then you shred it up. And again, super versatile. You can make burrito bowls. You can make tacos. You can put it on salad. You can do all kinds of stuff with it. So those are a couple of my go-tos. Hey guys, we absolutely love getting your questions into the podcast, but we're also interested in your journey. So if you've started intermittent fasting and have some success or even struggling a little bit, we want to hear about it. Email me your intermittent fasting stories to Chantel at ChantelRayWay.com. Now back to the show. Ashley in Northern Virginia, I loved your podcast about emotional eating. I took your online quiz and determined that I am a stress eater, which didn't surprise me one bit. I love to go through the drive-thru at the end of a stressful day, and I've been really mindful about finding other outlets for my stress and have been doing a lot better. The area I still struggle with is my bored eating, mostly at night when I'm hanging out at home. I just can't stop grazing. Do you have any tips to help with this? So this is a really good question and such a common thing. I see it in so many of my clients. Um, so know that you are not alone at all <laughs> with that struggle. Um, and honestly, one of the best things to really help with that is to try something like intermittent fasting because it gives you that, hey, at this yes. time, the kitchen is closed. Yes. And you just make that mental switch where you're like, okay, at 8 p.m., the kitchen's closed. It's off limits. It's done. There's no more food happening. Um, another tip that I, that I like to give for that, though, is if it's a lot of that kind of mindless thing you need that kind of hand to mouth sensation. So you got to keep your hands busy and you got to be kind of putting something in your mouth. So one of the things I like to do and what I recommend for a lot of my clients is, um, get an herbal tea that you really enjoy mm -hmm. and have hot tea to cap off your day. That way you're holding the mug. So you're doing something with your hands, you're sipping on that hot tea. So you've got the hand to mouth. Um, and it's very warm and satisfying and, and it can really kind of help, 
with the comfort aspect because it is warm and satisfying, but I it love also keeps your hands and mouth busy. One of my good friends, um, she's actually on our podcast, uh, Jen Van Horn, in an earlier episode. And she, it was funny because when I had met her, you know, I, I, I wrote a book and my book is all about interviewing women who've been thin their whole life. And I asked them, you know, what do you eat, breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And one of the things she said to me was, if I didn't drink hot tea yeah. or hot, what she, one of the things she does a lot too is hot water with lemon. And she doesn't even put any tea in it. She'll just do like, sometimes she'll do a nice herbal tea, but she's like, sometimes, you know, you don't, you only want to have so much even herbal tea per day. She's like, she's like, you would not believe she's like, there's days that I might have eight to 10 cups of tea. Um, yeah. or not just tea, like she, she doesn't have, like she might have, you know, four cups of herbal hot tea and then a couple cups of just water, hot water with lemon. But she says it's something magical about the hot water, um, and the lemon that just kind of, it just kind of finishes you and that tea, it, it's unbelievable, but it really kind of goes, okay, this is going to be good. And I love that. I think it really creates the habit too. And that's honestly what a lot of what that those kind of struggles are. It's the habit of grazing. It's the habit of reaching for something because you're bored. So if you just keep up the habit technically, and you're just replacing it with something that's a better option. And I will say a really good tip, by the way, for anybody that wants to try the hot lemon water, if you also add a slice of fresh ginger root. Um, mm. Ginger is a natural um, anti-inflammatory and helps your body naturally detox. So especially if your belly's been a little bloated or, you know, maybe it's that time of the month and that kind of stuff, um, adding some fresh ginger root to the hot lemon tea um, mm. yeah, kind of adds an extra benefit. Oh, I love that. And, and I would also suggest that, you know, that's where really saying a prayer um, is is really good because what we're, you know, one of the, the principles in my book is that you're only eating when your body is physically hungry. And so what you're doing right then is you're saying, you're literally saying a prayer like, God, what I want to do right now is I want to go in the pantry and go get some chips and some popcorn and some snack food and some brownies. And I know that I'm not, my body's not physically hungry, but it's just something I want to do. And I just ask that you kind of take away that, that urge and take away that, that sensation right now and just stopping I, meditating I like and in prayer. When you're struggling with your day and you're having a rough time and things like that, you know, lift it to God before you lift the fork. Yeah, that's, mm -hmm. that's kind of one of my, one of my phrases I like to remind yes, my clients like about. That. And, um, the other thing is too, is we have to remember God does not promise that he's going to take away temptation. He's going to make things not exist anymore. What he promises is that he will always be with us and he'll show us the way through it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're saying those prayers and you're lifting those things to God, understand that the the desire may not fully go away but you'll be empowered to resist it um and i think that's kind of the key thing to look for is because i've known people where they're like well i'm just i'm waiting for god to take away the actual desire and i just you know try to gently remind them that hey he doesn't promise he's going to take away that temptation he promises he's going to be there with you during that temptation um and that's why I really like that phrase of, you know, lift it to God before you lift the fork. What's really going on there? What are you stressed about? What's that underlying reason that you're reaching for these things? Um, because like you said, you know, your body's not physically hungry. So what comfort are you trying to fill with those calories? Awesome. All right, Jennifer in Louisiana. I'm really frustrated because I've been working out with a trainer three times a week for the past two months and I'm not seeing results. The first month I didn't lose any weight, but I was kind of prepared for that because I heard it was normal. But I just had my two month weigh in and the scale has only budged a pound. Do you think I'm not doing the right kinds of exercises with my trainer? And what kind of exercises do you recommend? As for my eating, I'm sticking to a six hour window each day and trying to stay under 1600 calories. Am I eating too much? Help Jennifer in Louisiana. When you're exercising, 
Um, first of all, keep in mind that we exercise for health more than we exercise for weight loss. So weight loss is going to come primarily from nutrition and we work out to do other things besides weight loss. Like we do it to get stronger, get more flexible, get better endurance, work on our heart health, but we shouldn't be focusing on exercise in terms of weight loss. And part of the reason for that is because as you're getting stronger, as you're building muscle and things like that, the scale is going to play a lot of tricks on you because when you put on more muscle, you actually are gaining weight technically. Um, the other part of that too is when you're sore, when your muscles are sore, that actually technically means that they're inflamed, which means water retention, which means more weight on the scale. So that would be the other thing thing is, you know, if you're weighing in and you've got a lot of sore muscles, that can be skewing that scale result um, because you actually are quite, you know, quite literally you're puffier <laughs> than you normally would be because of all of your sore muscles. So I was just going to say as far as type of exercise, because I know that was the other part of her question, it 100% depends on what your goals are. Um, there is no right or wrong. It's just, what are your goals? Are you wanting to be able to do 25 push-ups? Are you wanting to lose weight? Are you trying to get toned abs? Like that's what dictates the type of exercise. Um, but otherwise, yeah, those, those would be the things I would check on is, is, is she getting enough calories and, and so on. My, my answer is that I think that one, a lot of times I think people are eating more than they think they are. And so I see people all the time and they're like, oh, I think I'm only getting this many calories, but they're actually eating a lot more than they really think they are. And number two is that for me personally, when I lift weights, I definitely will gain a few pounds. Um, and so if I'm not balancing those weights with cardio, so like if I'm doing weights, but I'm also doing a lot of walking or cardio or elliptical, it balances me out. But so like, I don't love doing cardio, but I love lifting weights. And so for me, I, I love walking so that that helps me. That'll keep my weight in check. But if I'm doing, let's say I'm doing four days a week or six days, sometimes I'll do six days a week of weight training um, because I just love it and I enjoy it so much. But I will end up gaining some weight. So you have to make sure that you're balancing out some of that weights with cardio is my suggestion for you, Jennifer. All right, Jana in Wilmington. She says, I've been married for about a year now, and as soon as I got married, I determined that I was not going to be the person that let herself go once she landed a guy. Around that time, I started intermittent fasting. Most days, I eat in about a six-hour window. Sometimes, I eat one meal a day. This sounds weird, but lately, I've noticed it's taking a toll on my relationship. My husband works crazy hours, and our time to connect is in the evenings. One of our favorite things to do is to go out to dinner or make something really yummy at home and enjoy it with wine. Typically, this didn't happen till 8 or 9. Now that I'm limiting my eating window, I can't do this anymore, especially on the days I eat one meal a day, and there's no way in the heck I can wait until 8 p.m. My husband mentioned the other day he misses this. I love fasting, and I don't want to sacrifice my health, but I also don't want my marriage to suffer. What do you recommend? Jana in Wilmington. Yeah, I love this one because it's it's so personal and heartfelt, right? Like obviously our relationships and our husbands are a big deal. And so I love that, um, that Jana's really taking that into consideration. And I think this, in my opinion, this really comes down to you want to find harmony between what your goals are and what your approach is and your real life demands. And our husbands happen to be one of our life's demands, right? Um you have to find that harmony that you're going to be happy with and that he's going to be happy with. And it may mean you, you continue of course to do intermittent fasting, but maybe you do the OMAD less often, you know, that way you can shift. shift your eating or she so can, that. if she starts doing it eight o'clock at night, here's the thing. If, if one night she did it eight o'clock at night where she did it, your body will get, kind of get used to, I mean, I, I have quite a few friends, actually my skinniest friends, they literally, out of the friends that I have that are the absolute slimmest, their routine is they literally have a snack around 
like two or three o'clock, something small, um, like yogurt or some nuts or some, you know, fruit or whatever, and just something small, maybe 200 calories or so. And then they eat dinner at like seven or eight o'clock at night and they eat that one meal. So they're having like a little tiny snack and then seven or eight o'clock they're having, that's when they're having their one big meal and they're just as skinny as can be. So I think that you could switch to that that method. And it's it's funny that she says that because if I look at all the girls that I interview, the ones that are skinniest, that's their routine. <laughs> But yeah, I agree with you. She could make it where she's doing one meal. She could make it less or she could just do two smaller meals. What else were you going to say, Jessica? Yeah, just push back that window so that, so that they're eating together. Anything else on that one? Um, no, that, that, was, that was pretty much what I, what I was going to say. All right, perfect. Well, um. I know that you do um, some coaching and some stuff. So um, tell us a little bit about, you know, I know that you offer one on emotional eating, one on intermittent fasting. What what other courses do you provide and how can people get in touch with you? Yeah, definitely the best way to see everything that I offer or to contact me is through my website, which is jessieconley.com. Um, that's going to be the best way to see everything. But yeah, I have a couple of mini courses. So the one on intermittent fasting, I have one on the high fat, low carb or the modified ketogenic diet. Um, and definitely, like you said, my emotional eating one that I have. One of the things that I actually just released today, um, literally just released this, announced this today is a monthly membership program as well, which is um, a, a very unique way to get monthly coaching. And so all of that information will be up on my website soon. I just announced that in my Facebook group today. Um, and then of course I do offer one-on-one -on -one private coaching as well for the people that really need that extra accountability, that extra support, that really one-on-one -on -one attention um, can, can really benefit from private coaching as well. Awesome. And um, how, how tall are you and what is kind of your goal weight for yourself? Yeah, so I'm 5'8", um, and I'm currently 150. So for me, um, I'm not looking to lose any more weight at this point. I, I have switched over to body composition changes. So I'm really working on um, heavy weight lifting. Plus, I also do cardio every day. Um, and I'm eating a very specific meal plan that's going to really help build muscle. So um, that's, that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm really no longer focusing on the scale. I'm, I'm at a healthy weight range. And I, I think, by the way, that it's important to have a range rather than a specific number because weight will always be a moving target, um, especially for women because we have these pesky little things called hormones. <laughs> um, so for me, I, I'm done with, I'm done watching the scale. I'm, I'm focusing more on what my body actually looks like. And that's what I'm working on changing right now. So now these courses, so I know you have an intermittent fasting course, um, and it's very reasonably priced and it's just $27 for the course. And it's, is it, so you, when you log in, do you kind of have like each day you watch a different video? Um, so right now it's all, um, lessons that you read. So it is broken down into different, um, lesson subjects. I very soon, I will have audio versions of it up right now. It is lessons that you read. Um, and, and that is how those mini courses are set up. Yes. And my other courses are set up that way too. Um, but they are a little bit larger, um, a little bit more comprehensive. So the price point changes but yes the many courses are, are set up where you log in and then you have full access to the whole course right away you have access to it for life so you can always refer back to it that's awesome well it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show and it's just been so fun getting to know you and i just appreciate you so much so thank you again for being on and if you have a question that you want answered, go to questions at chantelrayway.com. And we want to hear your story. So we'd love to hear how you're doing with intermittent fasting, how you're doing with your goals. You'll email us and we'd love to hear it. Thanks, Jessica.